Are Americans ignorant? Hey guys, thanks for watching Picture This. A cat wearing glasses scrolls through TikTok, stopping occasionally to paw at a history textbook on the table next to it. A metaphor for modern America? Maybe. I know, it sounds a little on the nose, but bear with me. I better explain what ignorant means in comparison to stupid or dumb, then we'll get on with who's to blame for this mess. Ignorant means lacking knowledge or awareness in general, or about a particular subject. It's not an insult, but rather a state of not knowing. It's different from stupid, which suggests an inability to learn or process information, and dumb, an outdated term once used to imply an intellectual deficit. Ignorance can be fixed with information and understanding. Stupidity and being dumb imply more fixed limitations. Now with that out of the way, let's dive into who's really responsible for this mess and how it got so out of hand. You see, the question, are Americans ignorant, isn't just a juicy debate topic at family dinners or clickbait. It's the big elephant in the room that's been fed a diet of media confusion, bad education policies, and social isolation, and it's stomping all over democracy, often by the other elephant in the room. Let me explain what I mean. Let's kick things off with a real classic villain, the star of Iran-Contra and Bedtime for Bonzo, none other than actor Ronald Reagan. Or was Bonzo the star? In the 1980s, he, I mean Reagan, slashed education budgets with the enthusiasm of a horror movie villain with a chainsaw at summer camp. But instead of slashing victims at the lake, it was programs like civics and the liberal arts that got butchered, amongst the other programs and safety nets that he killed. Sure, cutting things like civics may have saved a few taxpayer bucks in the short term, but what it really cost was the general public's understanding of how the government actually works, and with it, many Americans ceded their role in the public sphere. High school civics class became the stuff of legend, like unicorns or politicians who don't interrupt you mid-question. This combined with the Citizens United Supreme Court ruling that put unlimited money into politics by corporations and their billionaire overlords changed the dynamics of American civil and social life, as well as who gets listened to in government. And it certainly isn't us who get listened to. Bernie Sanders has been right all along. This wasn't just about schools, though. Reagan kicked off a whole era of rugged individualism, aka the me generation. People turned inward, shifting from collective societal engagement to, well, man caves, garden parties, and gated communities. It was all my home is my castle thinking. Who needs neighbors when you can shut out the world with cable TV, streaming, TikTok, microwavable meals, and the sweet illusion of self-sufficiency? Here's another cat video. Before the internet and smartphones turned us all into glassy-eyed doom scrollers, televisions wormed their way into every living room like uninvited in-laws who refused to leave. Screens got bigger, the content got dumber, and any hopes of sparking the next great enlightenment dimmed. Informed, active citizenship fell by the wayside. Remember when families watched news together? Probably not, it hasn't happened for generations. Now it's all Netflix cues and YouTube rabbit holes. In the transition from porch-sitting neighbors to lonely binge-watchers, America lost its sense of shared experiences. And when you isolate people, ignorance festers. They also tend to be more alone, lonely, and more anxious and stressed, exacerbating the health and mental health crises in America. Reagan's education cuts may have been the start, but media entertainment pulled Americans further away from each other. And, let's face it, from reality. The term news used to mean something, back when Walter Cronkite delivered it straight. But then corporate honchos figured out they could slap on some ads and make news entertaining and, of course, profitable. News divisions went from being sinkholes to profit centers and suddenly, facts became negotiable if the ratings demanded it. And then came Rush Limbaugh and conservative talk radio. Ever wonder why there are so many more conservative talk shows over liberal or progressive or any other viewpoint? Because the rich who support Republicans own the media and the channels that broadcast the conservative messages. Just look at Fox. If a person is only getting news from a biased source who lies to their audience, would you call that audience ignorant for believing the propaganda that the channel spits out? Or would you call that audience ignorant for making the choice to get their news from a single source that happens to be biased? Or would they be ignorant on both counts? A handful of companies own nearly all of the mainstream media channels in America, and the airwaves are ruled by profit-hungry talking heads, whether they lean left, right, or just in the direction of whatever makes them money at the moment. Enter Fox News, stage far right, with fear-mongering and divisiveness turned up to 11. You've got disinformation and outrage candy for sale, and the price? Our collective intellect, 
And while we're on the subject of elitism, let's talk about another driving force of modern ignorance, the Ivy League. Sure, they sound impressive on a resume, but these institutions have inadvertently helped sort society into winners and everyone else. The so-called meritocracy, meant to reward the brightest, has actually cemented a class divide. It's like Hunger Games, but everyone wears tweed blazers and sips lattes. Read The Atlantic's piece on it. Seriously, it's illuminating. Link in description. As a result, the non-Ivy masses get left behind, which only compounds the quality of life issues we already discussed. Plus, education funding isn't keeping pace, and media literacy is treated like a side dish of onion rings you didn't order. But hey, as long as there's a new iPhone every year, who cares? Have you ever noticed that social media algorithms are like that one friend who only tells you what you want to hear? Think about it. If you have friends, do they lie to you and tell you that you're right about something even though you both know you're wrong? It feels nice at first, until you realize it's slowly turning you into a caricature of yourself. My friend, I'm not going to lie about stuff. That's why I created this controversial video, because every American has the right to understand what's going on. And then we have social media bubbles combined with news bubbles, and they've turned Americans into echo chambers on legs. We talk past each other, not to each other. Preaching to the choir is comfortable, but it leaves us ignorant of other perspectives. Worse yet, Americans increasingly live in third-place deserts. That is, places out of the home or work to meet up. Often there's no library, no park, no cafe, no diner where everyone mingles. COVID only sped things up. Telecommuting is great. But when your Zoom buddies are also your only friends, guess what? You miss out on diverse viewpoints and experiences. The wealth gap is increasing faster than ever, but the rich and poor don't interact like they used to. Membership in social or charity organizations where people could meet people from different walks of life, organizations like the Elks, have been decreasing for years, shutting out another avenue for experiences, belonging, and one of the last ways for people to get diverse viewpoints. It's no wonder that our lives, culture, society, and government feel so dehumanizing. When we need to have our voices heard the most, we have fewer social interactions or venues to do so, so we need to create some. Look, we all love a good distraction, but when a Kardashian divorce gets more airtime than a climate disaster, it's a problem. We've swapped substance for fluff, and consumer culture reinforces it. Ignorance is practically being sold like a shiny new product or a viral trend. For many of us, all we get is fluff. Part of that is our need to escape or fear of missing out. Another reason is because so many of us don't have the time for anything else. Too many of us are working dead-end jobs that don't offer any substance or purpose or meaning, and many of us are too overwhelmed with day-to-day -day life and errands, cleaning, and everything else. And many of us are working more than one job or caregiving for a parent or child. To put it bluntly, most of us don't have the conditions, resources, opportunity, or knowledge on how to have a better life. Too many of us are living paycheck to paycheck. Too many of us have a worse quality of life than our parents, and our kids will have it even worse, assuming we have a family or children, because they're gonna end up paying the bills on all of this. Just look at some people's ignorance on the immediate need for climate change mitigation as an example. Many of us are ignorant on how to even interact with each other with respect, dignity, active listening, reason, civility, manners, sensibility, civic virtue, and compassion. Remember the running jokes on late night TV of the stupid and ignorant American? Did you understand everything I meant in the previous sentences in regards to the need for immediate climate change mitigation or civility or civic virtue or reason or active listening? Pretend I'm the interviewer on the street asking you if you know what those things are or their importance. How would you answer? See, the stupid American trope really isn't funny. It's a shame that it's gotten this bad. We're the laughing stock of the rest of the world. Well, not so much after the election. Now they're just scared and wondering why we put Trump back in office. Dear world, your narrator here. Please know that I didn't vote for Donald Trump. Never have, never will. Even if he's the only name on the ballot, I won't vote for him. Even if he doesn't have elections anymore, I still won't vote for him. We truly live in an ignorance epidemic, and the Trump administration isn't going to be making a vaccine for it. If anything, they're just make it worse. And the stakes are high. Watch my highly moving video, Fractured World Tipping Points, to tell you how bad it really is if you don't already know. That's not fear-mongering. This is the new reality we all live in, and things are only going to get worse if we don't start to work together individually and as nations on the global stage. Trump just made both of those things less likely. Yes, the Democratic Party has been failing we the people ever since it started taking money from big business and billionaires just like the Republicans. 
I even did a video on how and why we need a social and political movement in America to take the party back to truly be the people's party and offer resistance against the Republican takeover of all three branches of our federal government, the legislative, executive, and the judicial. They also run most of the churches and the corporations in America. This ain't no conspiracy theory. This is a conspiracy that we have to stand up to. What was the real justification for voting for Trump or not voting for Harris? The Republican Party has been selling America a bill of goods when it comes to the economy, and America keeps falling for it. Republicans raise the deficit, they cut taxes for the rich, they cut programs for the poor and middle class, they make everything more expensive, and the problems just keep getting worse. You can Google and fact check all that. Not only are many of us ignorant of these things, Americans have a short attention span and an even shorter memory because year after year, they keep saying that the Republicans are better at the economy than the Democrats. Americans have decided to keep taking the blue pill, that's a matrix analogy, not one on affiliated party colors. The Republicans have taught many Americans to vote against their own economic interests. No wonder we feel poorer because many of us are, and it's just going to keep getting worse, time will tell, folks. Think climate change. Think cities like Miami and New Orleans being underwater permanently by 2150. Climate change alone will likely increase our taxes, the number of international conflicts, economic inequality, and if you think migration is an issue now, just imagine how bad it will be when entire nations sink into the ocean and the world's largest cities have to be permanently evacuated. Drill baby drill is just going to make it worse. America's ignorance doesn't just harm us, it harms the world. And let's be honest, that ignorance made possible another Trump presidency. Think vaccine conspiracy theories or climate change denialism. That's what happens when people are ignorant. They're easily controlled by the loudest voice. And I think we all know who the loudest voice is in America right now. And you know something else about the loudest voice? The loudest voice doesn't make them right. It just means that they want more attention than anybody else. Our air, water, land will become more polluted. We may not get new vaccines and public funding for vaccine research may be diminished, which means even higher prices. Americans will become sicker, we'll have less health insurance, and the prices of healthcare will get more expensive as will everything else. Especially with Trump's promised tariffs, more people will fall behind and become destitute. Homelessness will increase, as will crime more than likely. And people will have more trauma, and will probably see more drug use and more suicides. That's the cost of another Trump term. Some of the costs will also see less social programs and our rights will be diminished. When we try to protest these things, more of us will be put in jail. Did you know there's more prisoners in America by both percentage and total number than any other country in the world, including China? And China has roughly four times more people in its population than we do. If people would have truly been informed and understood what was going on, they wouldn't have voted for Trump. Yes, there really is an ignorance epidemic, but it isn't too late. We can all get more involved and informed, and we need our political parties to truly represent America and Americans. Watch this video next to learn more about civics and the role of money in politics. Is ignorance fair to everyone else? No. Our founding fathers might be facepalming from their graves. If ignorance is America's Achilles heel, then education, empathy, and engagement are our shields. It's not enough to know, we must also care and care enough to get involved. Our Renaissance Spirit Channel is committed to this fight for knowledge and understanding. Through history, politics, culture, and more, we aim to revive the Renaissance ideals of compassion, justice, and enlightenment. Let's transform ourselves in society one step at a time. This is our moment, our chance to make a difference in the world and stand up for civility, civics, reason, and compassion. Live the Renaissance Spirit. History is not dead, only our understanding of it is. Subscribe, share, and keep the dialogue going. Are you ready to test your Renaissance spirit? Take our quiz and start living with purpose today.